So why do we end up getting so confused and feeling like we're going crazy within a narcissistic relationship? Why are we the ones that end up questioning and doubting our thoughts, our feelings and our abilities? Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you overcome narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. This video is about cognitive dissonance and induced compliance, belief disinformation, forbidden behaviours and free choice. To understand more on how a narcissist takes control of our mind, these are theories behind cognitive dissonance and the different parts that they play a significant role in, how easy it is for your mind to be manipulated by narcissistic people. One of our basic emotional human needs discovered by Tony Robbins is love and connection, which is the strong human need to love and connect with someone else. Beliefs are thoughts in our mind that influence our own attitudes, our actions and our behaviours. The power of choice to what we do and do not want to believe. Beliefs are only thoughts and are not actually real and once we have more understanding on these we then have the power to change them to work for us if you grew up with two parents remaining together so you believed that that's how it's done or your parents were separated so you believed you wanted different for your children or religious or various other factors your beliefs around relationships are usually created in early childhood. They might be that you stick together no matter what happens, that relationships are hard work, that you will have to stick at them and work at them, which yes, relationships can go through rough patches and genuine people who can communicate with each other and compromise with each other can work things out. When you're in a toxic relationship, you need to change those beliefs and realise you don't have to stay. Core beliefs are formed in early childhood. Other beliefs are formed within our minds through our own personal experiences or what others tell us to be true. Why, even if you have the same beliefs as another, the interpretation of those varies between person to person. Values, ethical values in good relationships are honesty, loyalty, respect, understanding, self-discipline, trust. Narcissists can look for those qualities, those beliefs and values in other people, either on a conscious or a subconscious level. And at the start, they will mirror these back to you. That is not who they truly are. They are showing you yourself. When their envious face comes out and they show themselves for who they are, it causes massive conflict within our beliefs, causing us confusing thoughts and to doubt our own judgment and thinking abilities. When you meet a narcissist, you will most often be on the receiving end of their idolization, and this is to manipulate and influence you. They might be doing favors for you, as so when someone does favors for you, your perception of that person are good, and your feelings are extremely positive towards them. Overwhelmingly, you receive adoration and attention from them, manipulating you into wanting to spend more and more time with them. And why wouldn't you? You feel a great connection, truly understood and very loved, meeting one of your human needs. A narcissist gains your love and trust with flattery, attention, commitment, the narcissist future faking, those false promises of marriage, and they'll try to move the relationship on very quickly. Things like, if I moved in, we'd see each other more and I could really help you around the home, share the bills, or if you move in with me, you can stop working and I'll take care of those bills.
Any personal problems or outside situations you're having in the beginning, a narcissist will be there to help you any way they can. They want you to think you've met the kindest person ever. They want you to admire them. Most will even drop hints, subtle or obvious, about just how amazing they are for you. They might continuously shower you with gifts or trips. This is all manipulation to confuse your mind, which causes cognitive dissonance and then induced compliance. Cognitive dissonance is a state of mind when your own thoughts are conflicted, where there is conflicting beliefs, realities or thoughts. Narcissists help you at the start to gain admiration from you and they will then at some point use this against you to break down your boundaries. Gaslighting you with words such as, after all I've done for you, or words to that effect which most narcissistic people, once you are hooked, they actually no longer will be doing anything for you, yet they'll constantly remind you of the things they did in the past. When you're used to spending so much time around them, often dropping your hobbies as they so desperately wanted to be with you, they make you feel so good about yourself in the beginning, then they'll just disappear on you. Again, manipulation of your mind as you lived that life, that reality, when they treated you so well, when they wanted to spend as much time with you as possible, then you're left believing it's your fault. A narcissist will start devaluing you, they'll start pulling you down, they'll start putting you down, invalidating you to manipulate your self-worth further, to gain more control over your thoughts. All those first promises they suddenly changed to they're not ready for marriage. They never said that or you took it out of context. You misunderstood them. This is all a form of a narcissist gaslighting, which is an insidious form of mental abuse to get you to doubt your own reality. To start a narcissist matches all your beliefs and values. You live that fairy tale and your mind believes it as it's seen it in the moment as exact reality. Then when they change the game on you, when they change into someone you don't recognize and they cause you pain and they hurt you, you might have had enough and tried to end it and they'll bring back all the charm they had in the beginning, causing cognitive dissonance. When they say things to you like, why do you have to make life so hard or if only you'd have done this when they threaten or intimidate you even sulking or giving you the silent treatment so you try really hard begging with them pleading with them doing all you can to make it up to them not realizing the things they're doing to you they give you the reinforcement of playing nice with all the charm they had at the beginning your mind is getting trained by them to believe when they mistreat you, it's all you're doing. For any problems or conflicts within the relationship that it's your doing, that in actual fact, there is nothing wrong with them and everything wrong with you. So you change your behavior time and time again, walking on eggshells, trying to please them so they don't throw massive tantrums which cause you pain. When your mind perceives something like pleasure, a good emotion when you've been trained how to act, when you act precisely how they want, they will reward you, causing induced compliance in your mind. When you don't do exactly as they please, a narcissist will punish you through many manipulative tactics, causing induced compliance as those punishments cause you great pain, so you do all you can to avoid the pain. The ups and downs of the relationship release cortisol from the stress and dopamine from the highs. These are highly addictive natural chemicals that the body releases and you can become addicted to the patterns of behaviour. Once addicted, it becomes increasingly harder to walk free. You will have or you will reach that point where you break free, learn about what's happening to you and never go back. Cognitive dissonance within your mind has several variables. Belief disinformation. When your beliefs are being contradicted, as the narcissist leads you to believe one story, then delivers another story that contradicts the first belief, with their intermittent reinforcement of the first story causing psychological, mental stress within your mind. 
that stress releases cortisol, which is addictive in itself. Yet to reduce the mental stress of the reality that's so painful, your mind often chooses to believe the less mentally stressful idea to relieve yourself of the painful thoughts, leading you to downplay the abusive behavior from the narcissist which of course is helped by the narcissist carefully chosen gaslighting of it wasn't that bad and blame shifting words to the effect of it was your fault that never happened didn't happen that way you made me do it you misunderstood me you took that out of context and all the rest as you seek moral support from the very person you don't see is persuading you that your reality isn't real you don't change your beliefs to the truth of the situation your mind unwittingly sticks to your original belief which gives you the brain fog when you can see something yet you cannot believe it to be true or really see it induced compliance or forced compliance after a narcissist performs a dissonant behavior towards you after they lie to you they find ways through manipulative words to get you to agree to their way of thinking their reality and their truths even though these are not factual as a narcissist doesn't want to accept responsibility for their own behavior and will not be held accountable they gaslight you psychologically through words actions and sometimes moving out items for their own self justification so even when you know they said or did something a narcissist will twist it all around leaving you getting more and more confused they will tell you or show you an example of when they treated you right they will intimidate you threaten you and they will use many manipulation tactics so you are forced to comply with their ways of thinking as your mind believes this will cause you less pain either from past hurtful actions of their behavior towards you fear of reactions leading you to walking on eggshells around them forcing you to behave how they want or why you don't see what is truly happening to you forbidden behavior the severity of the threat of the narcissist devaluation of the forbidden behavior with some narcissistic people this can be down to where you sleep what you eat who you go out with where you go if you work what you wear how long or the color of your hair when you have sex together when you answer your phone so when you've been programmed to know you'll get punishment from the sulks the silent treatments arguments never-ending questions threats and all the other manipulation tactics they use to cause you mental pain and negative emotions they get you to unwittingly conform to their way of living their way of acting behaving and thinking it stops you from being true to who you indeed are and what you genuinely want to do in life for fear of consequences to your actions of living a free life and how you should be able to live how if you were living with somebody who genuinely cared about you would want you to live and would let you live free choice changes in the desirability of your freedom of choice this is part of what makes it so difficult for people to walk free from narcissistic relationships the free choice aspect of cognitive dissonance occurs when you are faced with a difficult decision and there always appears an aspect of rejection pain or discomfort to whatever you choose so you might want to go out for you yet you know the narcissist will make it difficult they'll cause an argument and upset yet if you don't go out you'll feel anger and frustration and resentment that you didn't get to do what you'd like to do yet you know you'll not get any negative reactions from the narcissist if you stay when you decide is enough is enough and want out yet if you stay you believe you can help them and hope to get the good times back however you fear them and their negative behavior towards you if you leave that will also cause you pain the fear of the breakdown of a relationship pride and ego damage to your own beliefs that you could make it work and it didn't happen feeling guilty for leaving them or fear of what they might do from threats of your pay if you leave or i'll make you wish when the narcissist was the one to leave you you've got the thoughts of freedom yet those thoughts of no one else will love me i'm alone again mainly from the toxic words the narcissist drilled 
into your mind. So you think you want them back to help comfort you from all the pain. Most often, they are with someone new. Again, this causes your thoughts to go into what was wrong with me? What's so special about the new? Social norms and judgment from others may also play a part worrying about what others will think of you. When you don't open up with the right people, you're left with so many negative thoughts and difficult choices between getting help and support and the effects it might have or isolating yourself from the world. These thoughts can be resolved by changing the challenge beliefs, getting out of the situation and away from the narcissist. It's an extremely difficult thing to do, yet the longer you are away from them, the clearer your own mind becomes. Psychological dissonance slowly fades, psychological conscience is restored, especially when you seek out moral support from those who've lived the same life, at one point shared those same contradicted beliefs. Your reality becomes restored, your future becomes much brighter and clearer. Music can also help. Classical music can be the best. Any music you personally enjoy will help. When you make a choice for no contact or limited contact, if you cannot go no contact, the more you are away from them, the more your mind can start to think clearly. The trance they put you under slowly fades and the fog lifts. You can start to think and act for yourself again and do what's right for you and what makes you happy. The more you connect with those that have lived it and understand it, the more you can put reality back into your own mind. The more you can learn about narcissistic behaviour and the effects it has on you, the less you'll ask Why are they doing this to me? Especially with their smear campaigns and endless games from those narcissistic people. You just cannot seem to shake them off at times. The more you learn about them, the more you'll see their pattern of behaviour, what they are doing. The more you'll be able to laugh at how unbelievable yet believable their behaviour genuinely is. The more you'll be able to see their game before it comes so that you don't react to them and the less it will impact on your life and your emotions the more you will become able to realize you never even knew them let alone love them it was all an illusion of mind trickery you fell in love with yourself a narcissist mirrored you and the things that you would like out of life so start creating the things that you would like for your life today You can get control back of your mind, your thoughts and your feelings to reach the place of I'm in control of my own happiness and I'm in control of my own life now. You can and you will. When you found the coping strategies to survive a narcissistic relationship, you will find them to survive recovery and you will find them to thrive throughout your life. I shall add in the video description 15 things narcissistic people say to distract you from the truth. If anyone has any thoughts on the video, please add those into the comments as you never know who's reading through that it might help. If you are looking for further support, I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is in the description also. Thank you very much for listening. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.